Welcome to the world of Animal Allies, the doctors, volunteers, pet owners, and other surprising visitors who are out there making a difference. In the UK, Dr. Celia Newlove's patient is a little long in the tooth. While in South Africa, an animal helper opens his heart and home to injured birds. This week's how-to has the do's and don'ts on caring for reptiles. And Animal World investigates the dog's remarkable ability to sniff out cancer. Dr. Celia Newlove is a vet in Hampshire in the south of England. Now the dreaded bit. You got me all nervous, men, doing this. Huh? Today nervous. she's busy in the surgery, yeah, beginning with a temperamental cat who hates taking tablets. Hey. She's going to struggle. Oh dear. Help oh, me. How can right. something so little be such a I know, thing? I know. You could have an old English sheepdog in, it'd be perfectly good. And that's gone. No, that's gone. Oh, well, well done then, men. That was well done, well held. <laughs> Her next patient is a little easier to handle. Fluffy has a problem with his teeth. They keep growing at unusual angles, making it difficult and painful for him to eat. He needs surgery. So whereas once upon a time we used to gas them down, what we now do now is give them an inje injectable anaesthetic. Um, which is a little bit safer, you've got, you know, um, they, they tolerate the anaesthetic much better. Fluffy has been off his food and has lost quite a bit of weight. You can see it's actually drooling saliva, it's very wet here and then as a result it's quite wet on its legs. You can see the saliva staining, that's got quite a classic presentation of, of a, a bunny with rabbit's teeth problems. So we're just going to inject it into its muscle in its back which will just take a few minutes to have an effect. It does make them jump a little bit. I don't really like being injected in the muscle, don't bunnies? Alright mate, okay. Rabbit's teeth are very brittle. They don't have enamel on them like human teeth and they grow continuously throughout the animal's lifetime. Trimming them is a delicate operation. A heated blanket is placed over Fluffy to keep him warm as rabbits are susceptible to hypothermia. Rabbits normally have 28 teeth but Fluffy has a few missing. They've got quite small teeth and you can see they've got one of a few gaps in the back there and they're very regular shapes. And then down on this, this is the side that's been causing the problem. You can see this front one here is quite overgrown, sort of angling upwards. Um, so what we need to do is just basically is trim that right back down to the root. We never used to see any rabbits with teeth problems. And now it's becoming more and more quite a common presentation. Tell me to get that. No, don't worry. I'll answer it out here. Yeah, okay. It's just like a rasp, just to sort of take the edges off. You have to be careful with rabbits because they've got a nice big blood vessel at the back of their mouth. If you hit. Dr. Newlove files the rough edges of the tooth with a rasp. They don't have nerves in them in the same way that we do because their teeth are continuously overgrowing so you can take them back quite a way. Oh, that's as smooth as we're going to get it. Cheers. There we go, a little bunny. Thanks, Emil. Seems to get him a couple of injections to give him just to wake him up. One of the injections is an antibiotic to prevent infection, the other is a wake-up injection to counteract the anaesthetic. Oh my gosh, sweet. It'll be another ten minutes before Fluffy wakes up, and soon he will be back munching on carrots and Thanks, gaining Angela. weight. In Animal Doctors Part 2, Dr. New Love helps a lamb back on its feet. Come on, little lambkin.
When animal lover Volta Mangold wanders through his World of Birds park near Cape Town in South Africa, he is living a boyhood dream, a dream he first had 60 years ago. So I would lie in bed at night dreaming that one day I would live in a, in a tropical forest. Uh, it would be fully enclosed and all the birds and animals would be my friends. And the house in which I would live, it would be a very small cottage, doors and windows open, and we would live like in paradise. That's how it started. How Volta finally created his own private paradise is a bittersweet story. He was the successful head of South Africa's biggest toy retailer when his business suddenly crashed. Volta was financially ruined, but the experience turned his life around. Quite a few people lost quite a bit of money. I lost everything. And I thought, well, if I don't do now what I want to do, to do all my life, and that means to be close to nature and close to animals, there would not be another door or window open. Unemployed and poverty-stricken, he followed his dream, only to find he had walked into another financial nightmare. Of course, from the beginning, people brought sick and injured birds and animals. Now, each one of those is a liability. On the one hand, you get something unusual and interesting that helps you to build up something, but the liability of all those mouths that want food and accommodation was a killer right from the beginning. But I have learned to grow spiritually, and with my trust in the universe and trust in God, what was an impossibility has become a reality. Every time it seemed impossible to continue, the help came unexpectedly. We have built this place up on so many miracles and on so many people who have taken part so that I can only say that each person who comes in, who enjoys this creation, who has paid the entrance fee, all those who have become members, all those people who have died and left us money as bequests have made this possible and they are part of it. There is no way that I will say, well, Walter, well done. Never ever, because it's a, it's a shared experience. In the 30 years since Volta started the World of Birds Preservation Park, hundreds of birds and other animals have been saved from certain death. <coughs> Nearly half of the animals rehabilitated have permanent injuries. They end up spending the rest of their life being looked after at the park. The other half is released. And of the birds born at the park, some, like the owls, are released into the wild. Ralph the Black Eagle was hit by a car and left for dead. He's just one of the many animals now living a happy and healthy life. Well, he was a very friendly bird. For some reason, it, it seemed like he understood that we were going to help him. Normally, a bird of, of three years of age, I mean, a black eagle would be a vicious bird to handle. Uh, Ralph just accepted our, our treatment and that was it. Nice bird from day one. But I would like to see to have the people here who will continue in the same kind of spirit, who have the same kind of feeling for the animals, respect for life, and whether it's a sparrow or a parrot or an eagle, whether it has commercial value or not, that that is respected, that you love the animal for what it is and for what it has been created. And I personally have an instinctive feeling for animals. And when you have that, then you become one with nature. I'm the person who will, without embarrassment, say that I can put myself into the mind of a squirrel or into the mind of a bird. So when we create something, then I put myself into the mind of the needs of the animal. Now, once you do that, and it's functional and beautiful for the animal, it becomes automatically beautiful for the people. And this is where the sharing comes in. And this is a wonderful experience, a wonderful existence for me personally, for the people who work here, for the people who come and share. And one moment I will never forget, a few years ago, when an elderly man had walked through here with a companion, and he, then he started looking for me, because he just wanted to shake my hand and, and to say, Mr. Mangold, your life has been worth living. Now, this is the ultimate reward, and that's what makes it worthwhile.
After the break, Animal Allies will be back with the latest pet craze. And Dr. Newlove mends a broken leg. Reptiles are in. Having a lizard as a loved one or a snake as a sidekick is suddenly cool. But are you ready for the challenge of looking after one? Animal Allies Guide to Caring for Reptiles. Nobody knows more about keeping reptiles happy than herpetologist Klaas Gaycourse. He keeps a close eye on more than 300 exotic animals, half of which are reptiles, at Western Australia's Reptile and Wildlife Centre. And this is one of the most popular pets. Well, these pythons, a lot of these pythons are nocturnal animals. So just a nice warm heating pad is, is fine for these animals and the surrounding temperature in the enclosure must not drop below 20 degrees, 20, 22 degrees. But keeping your snake warm is just the start. Snake species are diverse. Their diets vary. They have different likes and dislikes and they display a wide range of temperaments, from docile to just plain dangerous. Class stresses that pythons and snakes in general aren't a good choice for the average pet owner. They've got to be very keen. No, they've got to be herpetologists for them for to actually keep a, a python. Because as you can see, they can get quite large and all he wants to do is go back in his cage. So it's not like a cat or a dog you can just sort of cuddle for a, for a long time. Lizards are generally easier to care for, but they're not your average pet either. You can handle them, but you can kill them by overhandling them. And I think that's where a lot of people make with their mistakes when they keep reptiles. They overhandle them. But lizards' food and shelter needs are relatively easy to satisfy once you know them. Check with an expert on exactly what your chosen species eats. And in their enclosure, they'll need a warm basking spot, as well as their own secret place. Uh, they certainly need somewhere to hide, because in the wild you won't see these very much at all. They're always hiding away, so they, they need a lot of uh, hide boxes or a lot of leaf litter where they can hide underneath. So before becoming a reptile owner, check out this week's Animal Allies How-To. Caring for a snake is a job for an expert. Be properly informed and prepared for hard work. Make sure you know the optimum temperature for your reptile. Give them a basking place and a hiding place in their enclosure. And don't forget, overhandling reptiles can be fatal. They are regarded as one of man's best friends. Now, some scientists believe they may also be able to save human lives. Welcome to the world of some unique dogs who are credited with the ability to sniff out cancer. Eddie Messer was one of the first patients involved in a groundbreaking experiment, trying to determine how reliable the detection of cancer by dogs can be. Well, I would say my wife and I, we first thought it was quackery. But this former police officer soon had the evidence to convince him. And he went around me and when he got right to the spot on my back where they'd already taken the biopsy to, he hit on it. He put his paw up there on my back and then sat down. And I thought, well, maybe it's something, you know. Golden Retriever Breeze and Schnauzer George have both been specially trained to detect cancer. In separate trials, each dog pinpointed the same area on Eddie Messer's back, where a potentially fatal melanoma, or skin cancer, was later discovered. Okay, if it hadn't been for them dogs, George and Breeze, I may not be here today. At the Florida State University Sensory so Research Institute, Dr. James Walker and, uh, is about to put George are, to the test. Are absolutely empty. He's wrapped live cancer cells in cotton so wool that, and put it uh, into a test tube. When the dog looks down, he sees exactly the same thing in each case. And then the last tube I put in 
is the one containing uh, from the uh, Wistar Institute some cultured melanoma cells, five different cell lines. With his trainer by his side, George is allowed in. He takes just a few seconds to sniff out the contaminated tube. It seems very clear that the dog can find those cells using only smell. It's been well documented that a dog's sense of smell is at least 1,000 times more powerful than a human nose. But exactly how dogs like George detect cancer is still unclear. Researchers have not yet been able to identify and isolate the chemical clue that deadly disease gives off. If scientists can unlock that mystery, it may open up a whole new world where animals and mainstream medicine work together. Certainly, I think if research could show that the dog has uh, a contribution to make, a clear advantage in helping to detect melanoma, absolutely it would make sense to try to incorporate the use of dogs trying to smell melanoma into mainstream medical practice, at least while we're trying to develop devices that can detect the same chemicals or some of the same chemicals that the dog is keying on. I believe in the dogs and I think that it's ideal for some of these countries that doesn't have the medical facilities like we do in the United States to have a dog if it could sniff it out. While there may still be some skeptics, counter survivor Eddie is convinced our human world is a safer place because dogs like George and Breeze have joined the fight against one of mankind's most fatal diseases. Back at Cedar Veterinary Clinic in England, Dr. Celia Newlove has a patient who's not going anywhere in a hurry. So it's three weeks old is this lamb. Um, we don't really know anything more because it was seen at our sub-branch and they've uh, just they sent him down. Yeah. yeah. Okay, stay still. This three-week-old lamb broke its leg falling down a rabbit hole. Dr. Newlove checks each joint to see where the damage is. The lamb is in a great deal of pain. Okay. You can see it's very swollen around the joint here, but basically he's, he's, he's broken the, the, the bottom of the, the radius and ulna, just above his knee joint. This is this is, going to be, this is going to be fun putting this on. Yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't look like An extra ray. nurse is called in to help hold the lamb right, down. Well, I, I don't know if you want to hold them. We need a leg held out, really. If you hold the broken leg. Yeah, that's fine. 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 Yeah, A layer of padding will cushion his leg and stop it rubbing against the hard plaster cast. All right, all right, all right. Because he's broken this bit here, we're going to have to take it above his, above his elbow. All right, mate. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. It's a bit like that cat that we just had in there. We hadn't missed it. It's just so strong. I was trying to give it a tablet and it was. <laughs> it's almost worse being smaller, do you know, I didn't half wiggle, yeah. didn't half wiggle, it had no teeth at all, but it managed to give me a gummy bite. <laughs> I got, got a bite. you? <laughs> no, it went... Oh, no, 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 no. Do you want me to have that leg? Make sure we keep your toes out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to put some gloves on, Angela, if you're going to be in the firing line. So basically, this is a plaster of Paris, so you put it in warm water and then squeeze it out and... Peg leg to get you some crutches, lamb. This is the, no different to the stuff that humans have on their arms. Mm. All right, oh. okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. So 
So what we'll do is we'll leave this on for two weeks because um, the lamb's going to grow quite a bit in that period of time. It's probably fallen down a rabbit hole or something. Got mm. his leg, got his leg stuck, and then panicked. Thank you very much. Okay. Got the scissors. Your pocket. Smear it and plaster the palace. Dr. New Love trims the plaster from around the lamb's toes so he can stand and walk. Nearly there. A couple more minutes, lamb. Then you can have a bottle of milk. This is what got me into this profession in the first place, lamb. Well, that was it when you went to see your son. Yeah. Look, look at this. Oh, you're oh. used to that. It is, isn't it? I don't, th I don't think that's a. Um, used to that. I think that's a pet lamb somehow. Yes. The lamb's a little shaky on his legs. It'll take a few days before he's feeling confident enough to walk again. But in a few weeks' time, he'll be as good as new. Smash it. Well, that's great. Okay, we'll be back. In the next programme, the world of animal allies travels to the Australian playground of the humpback whale, and it's off to the dentist for Zaza the cheetah. There are ways to make a difference.